If you're expecting a cogent vision of exactly who Movimento Cinque Stelle are, then you'll be disappointed, for it misses the point of the movement. I say movement because five-star movement cannot be defined as a party, at least not in a traditional sense. What they represent is a radical departure from traditional political organization. In some ways utopian, in other ways utterly brilliant, the Italian five-star movement couldn't have flourished in any other country but Italy. Beset by endemic corruption from all establishment political actors, there has been a true absence of choice for Italians. I'll do my best to keep the context brief. After the first post-fascist elections of 1946 and up until 1994, Italy was dominated by two parties, Christian Democracy and the Italian Communist Party. The PCI was the largest communist party in Europe and tended to the opposition, as governments consistently revolved around Christian democracy, dominating coalitional partners. This dominance of the political scene led to rife corruption. This came to the fore in voter consciousness come 1992 with the Tangentopoli, a major judicial inquiry that uncovered the widespread foul play taking place within the DC party and parties associated with it. Many of the trials involving key figures were broadcast on national television and thus became sedimented in the forefront of Italian awareness. This subsequently resulted in Italian politics taking a shift from proportional representation to a first-past-the-post system. This came to be known as the founding of the Second Italian Republic. The fall of the Berlin Wall led to a process of modernization, and the PCI became the PD, a moderate socialist group, the party of now former Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. By 1993, they looked poised to win the election by a majority with no significant right-wing opposition thanks to the CD's corruption scandals. Then came the infamous Berlusconi, who only three months before the 1994 elections formed Forza Italia. Berlusconi, media mogul, owner of AC Milan football team, was a popular figure, the name Forza Italia coined from football chanting in the stands, who campaigned with a soft message detailing the inexperience of the PD and a love of Italy. He aligned with the far-right Lega Nord, Northern League and the National Alliance and together they were able to beat the PD in the national elections. This didn't last long as Lega Nord withdrew support from Berlusconi in December, fearing Forza Italia may undermine their support in the north of the country. An interim government had to be formed, then from 1996 to 2001 successive centre-left governments dominated the political scene. This five years proved disappointing for the electorate and back came Berlusconi in 2001 then ousted again in 2006, and then back again in 2008. The years under Berlusconi exhibited equal corruption to those prior to the 1992 inquiry. Political debate in the country became reduced to vulgarity, and the political class came to be seen as a self-serving elite isolated from the population. This was increasingly profane considering the economic collapse of 2008 and millions of Italians sliding into poverty. On top of this, distrust of the media grew, it became obvious that Berlusconi was using his power to consolidate his media monopoly, as well as exerting considerable influence over his state-controlled competitor during his time in office. This paved the way for the growth of alternative media, namely and notably in this case, the internet. Berlusconi stepped down as prime minister in 2011, the country on the verge of bankruptcy, but he, he still had his vast media empire and his party still wields considerable influence. Many people viewed PD as one and the same as Berlusconi, and Berlusconi's support was necessary for the formation of the Monti government in 2011, and then that of Eric Goletta in 2013. To put it bluntly, the common view was that the established parties were one and the same, helping each other and cheating the Italian people. Democracy was, and is, a complete failure. Something radically new is needed. And now the stage has been set. This is Beppe Grillo, a popular comedian doing the rounds on the TV circuit in the 1980s. He was blacklisted in 1986 for openly criticizing the government on air. Always an outspoken critic against the establishment, he came to be praised after predicting a financial scandal involving Italian company Parmalat years before the mainstream media or political class covered the issue. Throughout the 90s, Grillo was somewhat anti-technology. In one notorious act, he even smashed a computer on stage. This was to change, however, upon meeting Gian Roberto Casaleggio, an entrepreneur who saw the internet as a viable means through which Grillo could spread his ideas that were becoming increasingly political. In 2005, Grillo founded his blog, Pepegrillo.it, which surged in popularity. Grillo's main focus during this period was Berlusconi, his blog becoming a counterpoint to his support for President Bush and the war in Iraq 
and a correction to Berlusconi's dominance of Italian media. Not only that, but Grillo became a stalwart against establishment corruption and mobilized the public against individuals with criminal records serving in government. Grillo then turned to the online platform Meetup, using it to form various civic groups throughout the country, able to work together and spread his ideas on the grassroots level. These groups mainly served as pressure groups, mostly focusing on local issues but loosely centralized around his blog. This work amounted to Time magazine listing Grillo as one of the European heroes of the media world in 2005. He was gaining international recognition. In 2007, Grillo started mass mobilizing the public. He held the first ever annual V-Day, with the V signifying Vaffanculo, meaning fuck you in English. Taking place in Bologna, Grillo was able to amass over 300,000 signatures, calling for an end to government corruption through enforcing fixed terms of office and stopping those with criminal records from entering politics. This was followed the next year with another day of action, which this time sought to liberalize the media that was becoming increasingly consolidated in the hands of Berlusconi. About the same time, individuals who aligned themselves with Beppe started running in local elections under the name Friends of Grillo. In 2008, they were able to amass roughly 2% of the vote on average, campaigning on local issues which tended to be related to privatization of the water supply or environmental degradation. The success of these efforts were nothing to write home about. Grillo in 2009 attempted his first foray into politics and tried to join the PD, the Socialist Party. His aim was to win the primaries, front the party, and use it as a platform for his views. Problem was, his application was rejected. In an ironically prophetic way, the then secretary for the PD famously declared, let Grillo form his own party, and let's see how many votes he gets. This set in stone Grillo's position as an outsider of the establishment, and although a setback, proved a golden opportunity. Grillo responded to the affront by creating Movimento Cinque Stelle, or Five Star Movement, why the five stars? Well, the five stars refer to the core policy points addressed by Grillo on his blog. These being public water, preserving the environment, public services, namely transport, internet connectivity, and the development of Italy. In 2010, the party managed to get four candidates elected in the regional councils in Piedmont and Emilia-Romagna, signaling the first signs of electoral breakthrough. But more importantly, the next year in 2011, Berlusconi was forced to resign, and a government led by Monti followed with unilateral support from all main political players. To make matters even more polarizing, the two parties that did oppose Monti were the Lega Nord and the leftist IDV, both of which between 2011 and 2012 were facing corruption scandals of their own. At this point, the Five Star Movement were the only movement the public could turn to, not embroiled in controversy surrounding corruption. Their anti-corruption message, therefore, made the electorate ripe for the taking. This showed in 2012 the party did exceedingly well in the north of the country, normally obtaining above 10% of the votes in local elections, most notably obtaining the mayorship of Parma, gaining 60% of the vote in the runoffs. About the time, national polls were scoring the movement about 15-20% to 20 consistently. The general elections taking place in 2013 were preceded by a rally held by Grillo in Rome. 800,000 attended. The party came second in the election, receiving over 25% of the vote. Now in 2016, the party is responsible for the first ever female mayor of Rome, who won the vote via landslide in June, Virginia Raggi, and is largely seen as responsible for the overwhelming no vote in the Italian referendum. So, now we have the story out of the way, who exactly are these people? And that's a difficult question because they kind of evade categorization. Sure, their focus is on things that have traditionally been mobilized by the left, like nationalized water supply and the derision of a political hierarchy, but they certainly cannot be considered left-wing in a partisan sense of the term anyway. To illustrate this, Grillo speaking to a Casa Pound activist, a neo-fascist largely student group in Italy, showed respect for Casa Pound's tenacity in wishing to overthrow the establishment. He also refused to take a position on fascism, saying, this question doesn't concern me, the Five Star Movement is an ecumenical movement. If anything, the Five Star Movement could call themselves post-ideological, and they see themselves as a radical embodiment of a politics that employs different methods of representation focused around the internet. Up to 2015, the movement was almost exclusively run around Grillo's blog, with referendums taking place on party policy and candidates chosen to run for elections being decided via online poll. This is the crux of it, really. Five Star Movement believes politicians should serve the people only, 
politics is not a career choice, so thus fixed terms should be implemented to prevent corruption and keep fresh blood in politics, free from unholy alliances with business and government. As a result, Five Star is often accused of being inexperienced and thus a liability, but it is so by proxy. Five Star Movement doesn't want the experience, that's the whole point, as their charter reads. Five Star Movement is not a political party, its objective being the realisation of an effective exchange of opinions and democratic debate outside the associational and party bonds and without the mediation of directive or representative bodies, recognising to the totality of the internet users the role of government normally entrusted to a minority. To wit, with the internet and other forms of digitised mass communication, representative politics is no longer needed. Think of it more as a party that aims to utterly reconstruct the system of democratic governance than a party with stringent aims and policy points. As Casaleggio, Grillo's right-hand man, notes, the current political and social organisations will be deconstructed, some of which will disappear. Representative democracy by delegation will lose meaning. It is a revolution that is cultural even more than technological. This often is not properly understood or it is trivialised. Important to note, Grillo owns the copyright of the Five Star Movement's name, and in the past he has been quite vigilant in casting out those he deems inappropriate to the movement. In 2012, Giovanni Favia was expelled from the party for claiming it lacked internal democracy. This in mind, some have argued that although the movement stresses a horizontal relationship between members, Grillo still very much calls the shots. Five Star is the perfect example of a catch-all and populist party in many ways. Claiming to stand for the people, the movement can mean whatever local issues are pertinent to you, as can be illustrated from this Vote For You campaign poster utilised in Sicily in 2012. Virginia Raggi's mayoral win in Rome can best be framed in that way, not as a revolt against a globalist elite, but as a local revolt against a corrupt city grounded in very tangible issues of waste disposal, pollution, malpractice, etc. Please keep this in mind, as it would be ignoring the many unique situations in Italy to situate the rise of Five Star solely in the Trump-Brexit paradigm. It's very much an Italian phenomenon, which is why I did the best I could to illustrate the context at the beginning of the video, albeit simplistically. How this horizontal and localised movement structure would translate into more national issues like immigration, for example, I am not so sure, and I say this from a position of genuine curiosity. In 2014, when migrants attempting to enter Italy died off the coast of Sicily, some Five Star Movement senators called for the repeal of the Bossi Fini law that criminalises illegal immigrants. Grillo strongly disagreed with this position, stating, This amendment is an invitation to migrants from Africa and the Middle East to head for Italy. How many immigrants can we accommodate if one Italian in eight does not have money? But in the end, the movement voted online and concluded that the law should be abolished. There's a lot of heterogeneity in the movement though, and those that vote policy points online are a considerably minuscule minority compared to the millions voting for and supporting the party that could very well have differing opinions. It certainly will be interesting to see whether the centre holds if Five Star Movement gain power. There is potential for the party to split over non-unanimous policy points like this perennial and divisive issue. The developments will be interesting. Ideally though, this won't happen. It is not a party aiming to work within the party system for change. It's a party that wishes to transform the system entirely. Reform comes not through elected representatives, but through democratised web technologies. Grillo in the past has referred to political parties as zombies, the vestige of an outdated and pre-technological age. See Five Star Movement then as a revolt against a system's failure, a system that, in the eyes of millions of Italians, is destitute and irredeemable. Upon making this video, Sergio Mattarella, President of Italy, is forming an interim government post Renzi's resignation. It seems likely that in 2017, new elections will be held, and current trends suggest that Five Star will win a majority. Quite what that will look like in practice, I'm not so sure, but it really will be the implementation of something that has never before been tried. And for that reason, we should all be observing carefully.